Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give my top tips and strategies you need to know to get into a PhD program at Cambridge or any top university. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Alexander and I'm a PhD student in physics here at Cambridge. And today I thought it would be nice to share some advice on how exactly to get into a competitive PhD program. Now this advice is very much based off my own experience where I started at my local state high school in New Zealand, did my undergraduate in Wellington, and then got three full scholarships to do my PhD at Cambridge, one of the world's top universities. So if you want to know some of the, the strategies I use to get three full scholarships, um, just keep watching the video. Also, make sure to stay to the end for my most important piece of advice. The first thing to establish is how does the PhD admissions process work for Cambridge? Well, typically speaking, about two years before the beginning of your PhD, you'll investigate which universities you like the most and identify Cambridge. About a year and a half before, you'll then start to get in touch with potential supervisors. In about August of the preceding year will be many of the deadlines for external scholarships and in December will be the deadline to apply to Cambridge if you want to be considered for their internal funding opportunities. And finally, last chance to apply to Cambridge for most courses is in about May, although if you apply this late, you will miss out on many funding opportunities. Now, it doesn't always work like this, and it's really important you check the funding and course deadlines for your course specifically. There can be other differences as well. You might contact a supervisor much later, but generally speaking, for Cambridge, this is the timeline many people will follow. Okay, so we've got the structure. How do we make it happen? What secret advice do I have to help you? Well, you're going to be um, a little bit disappointed and maybe a bit annoyed because the first tip is very boring and that's to start early. The last thing you want to do is a day before the scholarship deadline, realize this is your lifelong dream and hack together a personal essay last minute. It's just not gonna work very well. What you want to do is start thinking early about which supervisor you would like to work with the most, what field of study interests you the most, or even which university you like the most. And it very well could not be Cambridge. These are all quite personal decisions and it's worth taking the time to properly reflect on them. You know, the PhD is a big investment of your life and you want to make sure you're going to put yourself into an environment which you'll thrive in. There's also the strategic element. If you get in touch with supervisors early, first off, it makes you look good. But secondly, a lot of professors only have a limited amount of funding and lab space. And often that will be first come first serve. Another aspect is that by deciding early, that gives you a chance to potentially improve your CV. You might decide that you need more research experience, um, maybe some volunteering, whatever it is, by deciding early, that gives you the time you need to actually improve your CV. So overall, you can never start too early. The next tip to get into a competitive PhD program is your CV. Your CV basically needs to be this juicy, irresistible advertisement for you as a person. It's basically like a dating profile, but instead of hot pictures, you have hot grades. So what makes a good CV? Well, as you might have guessed, the most critical thing is your grades. These are your bread and butter, and it goes without saying, getting good grades in a relevant undergraduate degree is the cornerstone of your PhD application. And you really want to focus, particularly during the later years of your undergraduate, to mostly be getting the top grade. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the higher, the better. The next thing is research experience. Now, I've heard some people say that you need to have published like 10 papers in a journal before you can make your application to Cambridge. That's completely not true. And I certainly hadn't published any papers before I made my application. But what you need to have demonstrated is that you have done research before and the people that you worked with, you know, thought you did well, back in 2017, I had an online interview with Professor Sir Richard Friend to join his lab in Cambridge, which I did end up doing. And in that interview, he only asked me one question. What research experience did I have? He had already seen my transcript and you know knew my grades, 
but the one question you had was what research have I done? So I would really recommend, you know, getting involved, offering professors to help in their lab, building up that experience, getting involved in research, that will really, really help. The other thing as well is that it will give you a taste of what doing a PhD is like, because the PhD in the end is research. The final things that are good for a CV are scholarships, extracurriculars, and volunteering. Now, if your grades are the thirst trap, these are the things that also show you're a normal person with interests. For the scholarships, what I mean by this are smaller scholarships that you might have gotten in your undergraduate, in high school, or even through some external source. The reason you want them is that when you're applying for the big scholarship, if the people reviewing your CV see that you got all these, you know, other scholarships, then they'll be like, well, these other people clearly saw something in this person, so, you know, probably makes sense to give them this scholarship as well. So I recommend having a good look online, getting creative, having a really good look for any scholarships you can apply for. And when I was in my undergraduate, I, I vividly remember going onto the Victoria University webpage and just searching for scholarships. And you know, what I found was that there was these pages and pages of scholarships that nobody knew about. So, you know, I applied for some of them and got some of them. And I think that really helped later down the road. Next, you have your extracurriculars. And this will be things like sport, music, writing, debating, I don't know, anything. You run yoga classes, whatever it is, put it on the CV. Because at the end of the day, success in a PhD does not depend on your ability to get high marks in an exam. Success in a PhD is about research and communicating that research. And to do that, you need to have teamwork, you need to be collaborative, um, you need to be creative, innovative. All these things are developed through extracurriculars. And admissions people and professors know this, and they will be looking for this as well. So definitely recommend filling up your CV, getting involved in your undergraduate, doing as many extracurriculars that you can manage while also, you know, maintaining the other aspects of your life. Volunteering is a little bit similar and it probably makes the most difference for scholarships because it basically convinces them that you're a nice person and you're worth giving money to. It's also a nice thing to do and just helps the world. Volunteering is basically the equivalent of having a picture of you and your puppy in a profile. It's a bit transparent and won't be the one thing that wins them over, but it usually doesn't hurt. So I know I went on for a while about the CV, but that's because it really is the most important thing to get into a high level PhD. Once you have that nice CV, the next thing to do is to start to get in touch with potential supervisors. And there's two main ways to do this. The first is to randomly email them. Now, you want to be careful here because top level academics get hundreds of emails per day. And if there's anything about your email that annoys them, they'll just bin it immediately. So a couple of things about your email. You want to make sure you're respectful. Keep it short. Attach your transcript. Make it personalized. Briefly highlight why you're worth their time. And most importantly, demonstrate some knowledge and enthusiasm about their research specifically. The other main way is to be a research assistant or do a master's degree at the place that your supervisor is. And this can be a really good method and I know a lot of people who got into a PhD this way because what it does is it gives you a chance to impress your supervisor with your work ethic and your research ability and make that connection. Whichever way you use to get the attention of a supervisor, typically what will happen is they'll you know, offer to have some sort of interview or chat and hopefully they'll say they'll support your application for any scholarships or Cambridge itself. Now this brings us to scholarships and funding. Now this is where it gets tricky because a PhD is expensive. And unless the name of your sugar daddy is Jeff Bezos, you're going to need to find a way to fund it. So how do you get funding? Well basically, there's three ways. First, when you put in your formal application to Cambridge through the postgraduate applicant portal, you will see there's an option to tick, yes I wish to apply for funding. And this means you'll automatically be considered for a variety of scholarships. Second is again through the postgraduate applicant portal, but with some additional information. So this might be answering extra questions, information about your chosen project, or maybe another personal essay. Third, you can apply for funding externally, 
i.e. not through the postgraduate applicant portal. Now, the most important thing to know is that if you want to be considered for the majority of the scholarships, you need to complete your application to Cambridge before the funding deadlines, most of which are in December or January. Now, these deadlines are different from the course deadlines, many of which are in May, although this will depend on the course. So what this all means is that you could complete your application to Cambridge in April and be accepted into Cambridge, however, you would have missed a huge number of opportunities to be considered for funding. So I would strongly recommend getting in your application to Cambridge early. You should also not wait until the very last day because you're going to need to get a lot of character references from referees and depending on how, on how busy they are, they might take a while to get the references in. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So these are the mechanisms for getting funding. The next question is, what are the different types of funding? Basically, there's three types. You have your international scholarships, your department or program-based scholarships, and your university or college-based scholarships. Now, for the international ones, these are things like the Gates Cambridge, which is for anyone, the Rhodes Scholarship, which is for Oxford, mostly people from Australasia or Africa, and finally, the Rutherford Scholarship, which is just for people from New Zealand. So you can tell the eligibility depends on where you're from. Next, you have your department or program-based scholarships. An example of this would be the Winton Program for the Physics of Sustainability. And finally, if you're wondering, the colleges are basically like the houses Gryffindor and Slytherin in Harry Potter. When you get accepted into the university, you get accepted into a college. Now, it's good to know that all of the different types of scholarships can be obtained through each of the different mechanisms of getting scholarships. So, for example, the St. John's Benefactor Scholarship, a college-based scholarship, that I got through being automatically considered through my Cambridge application, whereas the Winton and the Rutherford Scholarship, those I had to apply for externally. Now, again, super important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these external scholarships can have very early deadlines, sometimes as early as August the year before. So super important to keep track of all of those deadlines. This brings us to how on earth do we find all of these scholarships to know when the deadlines are? Well, luckily there are a couple of tools out there to help you. The university, for example, has this really nice funding search tool a list of more funding search tools, and you can also ask your potential supervisor. But let's say you have done all your research now, you have identified all the scholarships you're eligible for, when all the deadlines are, and now you want to know how to manufacture a successful application to Cambridge and any internal or external scholarships. So how does one craft a successful application? Now, this video is more of an overview, so I don't want to go to all the specific details, but broadly speaking, your CV will make the most difference anyway. For the personal essays, you basically want to construct your life into some sort of compelling, unique story where the conclusion of that story is you doing the PhD. For the character references, you really want to make sure to nurture good relationships with people in senior positions. For the interviews, probably my biggest advice is just be yourself. Now, I know this sounds like totally cliche, but if you think about it, it makes a bit of sense because the interviewers are basically trying to suss whether they can invest and trust in you by giving you this massive scholarship worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And to be sure that you're the right person, they need to feel like they know you. But if you're being fake, then they won't feel that. And humans are really good at telling if somebody's being fake. So again, I know this joke isn't even like close to being funny anymore, um, but it's basically like being on a date in an interview. Just, just be the best version of yourself. Another thing that I would really recommend is resilience and trying to learn from your experience if a scholarship rejects you. And for me, this played like a massive role. Back uh, in the day when I was applying for scholarship, the one scholarship I really, really wanted was the Rhodes Scholarship. The Rhodes Scholarship was just like, oh, the best thing ever, best thing I could possibly imagine. Um, and I got through to the interview and I was super excited and I totally flunked it. It went terribly. And, you know, because they wanted someone who could speak really well, well about current events, basically like a future president. And I just spent the last four years writing down physics equations. And one, you know, one of the questions they gave me was, you know, what do you think is the, the biggest problem affecting New Zealand society? And I sort of said that something like, oh, you know, child poverty is bad or something. You know, just totally not very eloquent at all. 
Um, so that didn't go very well. The next one was this Wolf Fisher Scholarship. I mean, I got through to the interview stage and flew to Auckland. And for this one, I was super, super nervous. And that resulted in a lot of overconfidence and that really kind of messed me up in the interview as well. So that didn't go well. And then finally, you know, I had a, a couple of other interview after that for different scholarships for the Rutherford and the Fulbright. And for that, those ones, I sort of thought to myself, well, first let's, you know, read a bit of international news and have formed some opinions about current events and also just try and chill out and not channel that nervousness into overconfidence and just try and be thoughtful in the interviews. So very much that learning from previous mistakes and that really helped me in my next couple of interviews. I also want to emphasize that if all this doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. And you know, it could even be the case that not doing a PhD could be a better thing for you. Or it could be that another university is better for your research that you're most interested in, or just better for you as a person. But even if you are like totally set on Cambridge or totally set on an another university, you still have options. And one that I would recommend the most is being a research assistant or doing a master's degree at the best place you can. I even know some university professors at Cambridge who did exactly just that. You know, maybe at the end of their undergraduate they weren't in the best position to go straight into a PhD at Cambridge, but what they did is they went into a master's degree at another good institution in the UK and used that time to do very well, build up some contacts, which allowed them to get into a PhD program at Cambridge. And, you know, once they got to Cambridge, they did uh, amazingly well and eventually became professors. So even if you don't get straight into Cambridge, there may be other routes as well. So to wrap things up, some of you might have remembered that I would give my most important piece of advice or the thing that helped me the most at the end. So if you're still watching, well, congratulations. You probably deserve a medal. But yeah, the thing that helped me the most was using connections. So how this worked was in undergraduate, one of the guys I did some research for was Professor Justin Hodkiss. And he had previously done a postdoc in Cambridge with Professor Sir Richard Friend. And I basically asked Justin nicely and he offered to send Richard a message to get me and him in touch. And that was massive because you know, if I just sent to Richard an email randomly, it might have gotten lost, but it meant so much more having the email come from Justin, someone he respected and had worked with previously. So yeah, very much using those connections, that can make a massive, massive difference. And I have still yet to come across any profession that doesn't depend on who you know. So those were my tips and strategies on how to get into a PhD program at Cambridge or any top university. I hope some of that helped. It can be really tricky to get in, and a lot of it does depend on luck, but I wish you all the best. If there's any particular part of the process that you want to know more about, or you want me to go more in depth in, let me know down in the comments, and I can make a video about that. If you liked this video, consider subscribing. And uh, if you want to know more about what it's actually like to do PhD research, um, check out a video that will be over, over here-ish. But yeah, otherwise, cheers guys and have a good one.